Hi everyone, my name is Maria Loram and I make functional ceramics for interior design. Welcome to my channel. In this channel, I share about my life as an artist, business, finances, creativity, glazes, clay, and everything in between. This video is one of the videos of the series of my glaze test reviews, and today we're going to be talking about lava glaze. It's everyone's favorite, it's my favorite, and I share a lot, a lot in detail which variables come in play when you create a lava glaze, how to create your own glaze, how to create different textures in my full course, Textures and Ceramics. A very common question that I always get, how does the mesh size affect lava glaze. If you don't know me, I love lava. I've been making so many things with lava glaze. There's so many different variations of lava glazes. It's really a whole world on its own. My whole journey in ceramics has started with a lava glaze. I got my first handmade ceramic cup and it had a lava on it. And I remember how I asked, oh, what's the recipe? I didn't even know that. It's a hard process of creating your own recipe. Obviously nobody gave me this recipe, but back then and the seed was planted and I decided that yes, I'm gonna be making ceramics with a lava glaze on top of it. If you don't know what it is, uh, it's also called crater, magma, lava, volcanic glaze, there's so many different names, but it's this beautiful bubbly texture on top of the object that gives a very organic and natural effect. Depending on the lava glaze, depending on the recipe, it could be smooth, it could be rough, it could be large holes, small holes, it could be all the different kinds of lavas and to truly master the lava glaze, you definitely need to test a lot and you need to find the one that you like the most. The most important ingredient in the lava glaze is silicon carbide. Silicon carbide is a main main ingredient. You can see that it's black. It's used not only in ceramics, but in a lot of other fields. It's dark and it's a foundation of the lava glaze. When you add this material to your glaze, what happens is that silicon reacts with other molecules versus carbon, carbide, reacts with oxygen and is being released as a carbon dioxide gas. So if you imagine the surface of a glaze, the carbon dioxide escapes from the glaze, it breaks the glaze surface and leaves big bubbles and big holes. Sometimes those holes get healed and the surface becomes smooth again. Sometimes the holes get not healed or do not show up at all if the glaze does not melt enough. So melting and therefore the reaction itself is very important for silicon carbide to react with the glaze. One of the big variables of what can affect our glazes is the mesh size of any materials, but in particular of silicon carbide materials. Mesh size is the size of the particles of the specific ingredient. The mesh size is a number. For example, it could be 46, could be 70, could be a thousand. And that number means the number of holes or openings per square inch in a sieve. So if we look at a number 70, that means there's 70 holes per square inch in a sieve. A square inch is probably around this big. So there's 70 holes per square inch. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> Maybe it's smaller. If it's a thousand, that means it's a thousand holes per square inch. And so as you can tell, the bigger the number, the finer the particles that can go through those holes. So if we talk about the thousand mesh size, it's very, very fine powder. If we talk about 40 or 70 mesh size, it's the particles that you can actually see with your naked eye. A smaller number means bigger particle, a higher, bigger number means finer particle. In theory, my theory is that, and I think that makes sense, the larger the particle, the harder it is to break it up, the harder it is to make it react with other elements, with other molecules, with the glaze itself. And so if we look at the small number, at the bigger particles, then there's going to be less reaction happening than at the rate of a thousand mesh size. Fine particle break down easily, therefore the texture, the amount of bubbles and everything else is going to change depending on the mesh size. And we can look at the textile examples of how I tested. I had different mesh sizes, so you can absolutely see the particle size even here. So you see this is, for example, 120 to 220 mesh size versus next to it is a thousand mesh size. And you see how much finer this silicon carbide is compared to this silicon carbide. So this is light gray and this is dark, dark gray and much, much bigger particles. So I found several mesh sizes in our local lapidary supply store. I do think that it's better to use ceramic suppliers when you buy mesh size 
different silicon carbide of different mesh sizes. Sometimes it might not be available and you have to look really hard for it. Sometimes Amazon works, but not always. I've heard bad things about it. I've heard that silicon carbide could be non-real silicon carbide. It could look like silicon carbide, but then it's going to not be actually reacting. So ask yourself where you got your silicon carbide if it doesn't react at all and what's happening. So that might be one of the reasons why your lava does not work. However, it also might be the recipe and we will see this in this example, in this video, but we'll also see it in the future videos where I describe where silicon carbide reacted really well versus where it did not react well at all. We, we can look at all of them and then we can go test style by test style. So what I tested, I tested different mesh sizes, 46 to 70, that's a mix of different mesh sizes from what I could tell, 60 to 90, that's also a specific number of mixes of mesh sizes that was available, uh, 120 to 220, 600, 800, and 1000. In the specific test batch, I tested six different mesh sizes. I put them in exactly the same recipe, in exactly the same conditions, in exactly the same kiln, even the same shelf to see what happens and what result is going to show up. As you can see, at 46 to 70, the smaller the number, the bigger the particle, the rougher the texture, and the more you can see those really dark particles that did not react at all. So some particles of silicon carbide reacted with the glaze and released carbon dioxide, they stopped being black, they mixed in with the glaze, they created these bubbles, versus some did not. That also means that only some silica from silicon carbide was interacting with the whole reaction and therefore it changed the glaze in a specific way or did not change things, it did not interact. The bigger the mesh, so the bigger the number, the finer the particles, the more reaction happened, the more it melted. So if you look at the bottom row, we will see that it's very rough, it's very textured, it's frothing a lot sometimes, sometimes it's bubbling quite a bit, and those bubbles just show up and reappear, but then the glaze does not melt enough to make the structure and the glaze a little bit smoother. At the same time, if we looked at 600, 800, and the thousand mesh size, then the texture gets, first of all, smoother, because my theory is that silica was released and therefore it affected the glaze and it melted a little bit better, but it's also because more stuff reacted, the reaction happened faster. So there's less of uh, actual grains of silicon carbide in the test, in the glaze recipe. The other effect that we can see is that the glaze gets whiter because more silicon carbide particles actually react with the glaze and therefore it is whiter. So I think the overall pattern that I see is that the smaller the number, the rougher the glaze is, the less of a reaction that happened. And sometimes it means less bubbles, sometimes it means smaller bubbles, sometimes it actually means bigger bubbles, because if big particle reacts with the glaze, then more carbon dioxide is going to be released, so bigger holes. And then at the same time, bigger mesh size, finer particles, means that more small particles released small bubbles, more silica reacted with the glaze, therefore the result. It's smoother, it's whiter, and the number of bubbles depends really. Like sometimes it's more bubbles, sometimes it's less bubbles. I personally did not notice a big correlation between the size of the bubbles and the number of the bubbles. It's more about the texture and the color for me. And we can look at another test. This is a different recipe and different type of application, different test styles, but we can still see a very similar trajectory. So we can see that the smaller mesh size reacted in such a way that the glaze is rougher and grayer versus the bigger mesh size, the finer particle is smoother and less gray. But it's not, not always the case. For example, I tested the exact same recipe, the very last test style of a southern mesh size in my kiln. This was in one of my workshops, but I tested this one in my kiln. And as you can see, it is quite gray. The reasons might be that I have a different uh, silicon carbide, but I think the bigger reason is probably that I put too much silicon carbide and it's either I didn't measure it properly or something, something happened in my calculations that made this gray color. So there's other things to be aware of. Mesh size or 600 or 800 does not mean 
that your glaze is going to be white, but using it is one way of whitening your glaze. And we can look at different mesh sizes in action of how I apply those mesh sizes to my pieces. This is one of the examples of a rougher mesh size of bigger particles reacting a lot more of bigger holes showing up and exploding versus this one is actually a combination of bigger mesh size particles. And although on the test tiles it was much, much smoother, in reality it wasn't as smooth. I would say it was quite rough, but the texture was still quite different from the lower particle mesh size. So my recommendation would be is to purchase all the mesh sizes that you can possibly find and test them with exact same recipes and see what happens. It's always best to test, test, test. But as you can see, those are the results that I got from my testing and those are the recipes that I like. I don't think there is the right mesh size for silicon carbide lava glazes, but I do think that it really just depends on the effect that you want to get from your glazes and the type of texture. This was a really nice quick glaze review. Stay tuned for more tests. I enjoy doing them. I have a whole course that's very detailed that shows how I apply everything, how I apply different techniques to create my pieces, to create wonderful textures, because textures come not only from lava glazes, but they come from different combinations of different techniques. My course covers everything from wild clay, rocks and sand and different aggregates, all the way to glaze calculations and how you can adjust and modify your glaze recipe. I also talk about lava glazes, lichen and crackled slips and all the different special effects that you can get from mixing your own glazes. I share all of this in detail, so feel free to join it if you're interested. In addition to that, if you're interested in specific recipes, you can follow me on Patreon. I test pretty frequently, I get a lot of interesting results, so I post both good results and so-called failures, which are not quite failures, those are learning experiences. And so I post all of that online. It's a growing collection. So if you jump in early, you're my early supporter. Other than that, stay tuned. The next glaze recipe review will be on a barium-based lava glazes and flux ratios. It's super fun. I really love it. And I think you're going to have a lot of fun watching it as well. Let me know if you have any questions, if you have any troubles with your glazes, if there's anything you'd like to cover. I am free, I am available, and I'd love to help you guys. I am all pro creativity and for self-expression. If learning a little bit of chemistry and seeing my tests helps you to express yourself, then everyone benefits. Thank you so much for following me and I'll see you in the next video.